Hello everyone, this is Leo, and today I'll be showing you how to overclock your GPU or graphics card. It does not matter whether it's from NVIDIA or AMD or what manufacturer has made it. The steps are pretty similar. You have to download, first of all, a tuning software, either ASUS GPU Tweak or MSI Afterburner or any equivalent software that you might be aware of. If you don't know, just grab ASUS GPU Tweak because that's what I'll be using for this video. By the way, all the products that I'll be using in this video will have uh, the links in the description so you don't have to worry about finding them. So let's start off with GPU Tweak. Now before we start, I'd just like to make a brief announcement. Do not do this on your laptop because Laptops are notorious for overheating. They're not meant for overclocking. They barely have sufficient cooling, let alone extra for, you know, more performance. So just don't do it in, on your laptop. I wouldn't recommend it because most likely at the end of the day, you'll have a fried laptop. So just don't do it. Now for the rest of us who are fortunate enough to have a decent gaming build, we probably have GPUs that we can squeeze a little bit more performance out of by overclocking. So let's get started. So right now it looks pretty simple, right? Just just push the sliders to the right. Yay! There we go. Memory clock maxed out. And now we're ready. Now we're going for full performance. No. No. This is not how it's done. Don't do this, okay? So basically you need to understand what you're doing before you overclock. It's it's not like you just move these sliders around like you don't know anything. It's it's not the way it works. You are not going to get optimum results. And keep this in mind that if done, you know, improperly, you can have damage done to your GPU, but that is a rare case unless you mess with the voltage, it is unlikely that you'll do any harm so no need to worry about that but if you do an improper overclock most likely you'll get worse performance than before so try to do it right so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to open up the graphs so that we can see our GPU temperature because that is going to be very important keep in mind that the GPU temperature should not go above like 90 degrees, 80 to 90 degrees. It should never go above that. If it's going above that and you're still overclocking, most likely it'll just throttle down and you'll get worse performance and you might have issues. You might get a blue screen of death. So don't do that. Don't let your card overheat. So we're going to change a few things in settings over here so that we can see more settings or tuning options. So first of all, I'm going to enable the max GPU voltage and the power target. And after that, we'll just get back to the tuning section. And as you can see, we have more options. Now, the GPU voltage is an important area. Do not mess with this until you know the need arises. Try to overclock without messing with this slider. But when you do realize that you're not able to get any extra performance, and you're getting issues or blue screen of death or your graphics card is just not delivering that's when you start increasing this a little don't increase it all the way in my opinion you should not apply more than 1.2 volts over here so change it within that range of course this is different for different GPUs but you never want to go beyond the safe limits so first of all, what you need to uh, think about is your boost clock. That is going to be your most important aspect. The more the frequency of the boost clock, the better the performance and the faster the GPU. So the idea is to get the maximum GPU boost clock and memory clock as possible while maintaining a relatively safe temperature. So you don't want to increase this you know just like that or you know just like crazy just put in a number no it's not how it works increase it in small increments like check your default frequency like for us the default is 1253 so I'm going to add let's say another 20 
megahertz to the boost clock and then maybe another 20 and maybe another 20 and that's how you keep going until you have problems and that's when you know you need to go back and that is your best setting now that's the same story with the memory clock now the power target is again something that you need to keep in mind so what this means is your GPU is probably going to be using more power to give you better performance and to run at a higher clock speed once again I would not recommend going all the way here but you can use your power target and this is also useful if you want to run your system with less power you can actually do that as well so it works both ways now the fan speed this is another thing that is pretty important and people often miss out on this now usually auto mode will mean that the default fan curve that's going to be what's going to be used to maintain your GPU temperature which is not always the best solution sometimes it is a better idea to set a manual fan speed so if you're having temperature issues try doing this increase your fan speed and set it manually to a fixed percentage like let's say I'm gonna do a 60 percentage over here so it's going to constantly run at 60 percent and as you can see by default because I have the Asus Strix the card turns off I mean the card doesn't turn off the fan turns off unless I really use the card so we have fairly high temperatures but if I set this fan speed you'll notice the temperatures will immediately start dropping there you go so these are the first steps now the next thing is just setting things here is not enough to know whether or not you have a good overclock so to test it out you will need some kind of performance testing software you can use anything you can use your favorite game and just check the frame rate you can use uh, you know something like the Fally benchmark any engines you like or you can just download performance test from Passmark which is what I'm going to be using for this video so let's go ahead and open performance test this is actually payware but you can go ahead and use the trial it won't cost you anything and that is just fine for what we're going to be using it we don't really need anything else so this is all you're going to need now let's get started so I know that this GPU is capable of a very big overclock because I've used it so I'm not gonna go in the very small increments but we'll be doing a very simple demonstration with first of all the default settings and then we'll do our overclock so right now we're back at default settings and what I'm going to do is I'll run Passmark and let's see what kind of a benchmark score we get with the default settings so that we can compare that after the overclock and see if we're actually getting any benefit or if our GPU is just slowing down or overheating we can keep these graphs open in the meantime that'll just keep us aware of what is happening with our GPU so I highly recommend this if you're overclocking your GPU get some performance testing software you can use anything use your game to benchmark but do run a benchmark because it happens very often that people overclock incorrectly and they end up running a GPU that actually performs worse and heats up more than the stock settings and that just makes no sense whatsoever so you want to test the performance to make sure that your overclock is actually doing you more good than harm so let's get started so I'm just going to run the test with default settings and let's see what the scores come out to be so after running all our 3D graphics tests we have got a score of 8941 so we're going to keep this in mind and see if we can make an improvement here by overclocking so let's get back to GPU tweak as you can see temperatures were pretty nice throughout the whole test we're never hitting over 74 and that is with the auto fans so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the overclock so I'm already aware that this graphics card has a lot of potential for overclocking because it has direct CU2 which means there's the copper touching the chip and then there's dual fans that run pretty well so we have a pretty good cooling system but you definitely want to check out the cooling system on your GPU is it a single fan operated cooling system is it a dual fan system is it a system with liquid cooling 
So you need to understand that and you need to be able to determine how much of an overclock it can actually take. And the temperatures are going to help you understand that. So for me, I'm just going to start with 1350 or let's say 1355. So that's a full 100 megahertz overclock. I'm not going to increase the voltage unless we see any performance problems. And as for the memory, I'm going to switch to 7510. And I'm going to set a par target of 110%. Now I do know that the fans ramp up quite a bit late on this GPU. So in order to keep temperatures really nice, although there's no problem here. I mean, this is basically safe temperature, but to make this extra good, I'm going to set a manual fan speed of 60% throughout the test. And now we're going to apply these settings. And as you can see, all these settings are now applied. So you can immediately see the GPU fan go up to 60%. Now we're going to run the benchmark again and see if that has made any difference, if we're actually getting any better performance due to the overclocking. As you can see, after the overclock, we are getting much better results. Our score has jumped up to 9,364, almost by 400 to 500 points. So looks like we have a really good overclock. And taking a look at the temperatures, they have remained really low thanks to our manual fan speed setting. So we haven't gone above 66 degrees. And everything's running fine. If you are really looking forward to stress your card, you can go ahead and do a stress test, but I'm not going to do that. It's usually not necessary unless you really stress your GPU a lot. But this is basically how you can overclock your GPU and squeeze that extra bit of performance out of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope you can use it to get better performance. Now one last thing what you can do is once you've found a really nice setting, what you need to do is you can save it and you can select your profile slot like let's say I want to save it in profile 2. So now all I have to do anytime even if I go back to like default settings, if I just click on profile 2 I'll go back to these overclock settings. So as you can see we just switched back and forth. So this is really easy. Whenever you're doing an intensive task or playing your games, you can just immediately switch to your overclock profile and for the rest of time, you can just go easy on your GPU. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please like this video and subscribe because I'm just starting off and this is my first uh, gaming channel. So let me know what you think. Write your ideas down in the comments below and I'll see you again later.